You've reached Michael Scott's phone. Well, I was kind of busy. Corporate. Um, okay. okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. Yes. So, I just got a call from corporate, and I'm the new language arts teacher here at the office. Uh, I think it's going to be good. It's a lot of responsibility. It really is. You know, this is what I've been training for in college. This is what my whole life has been leading up to, is this moment. This is my time to shine. I can teach these guys about things like diction, uh, grammar. You know, the possibilities are really endless. I'm really excited. I think this is going to be good. And, uh, you know, Dwight, he's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to teach Dwight. He's a crazy guy. But I'm going to do my best. We're going to see... See where the river takes us and hope that it's good. Okay, everyone, quiet down, quiet down. Today we're going to talk about denotation and connotation. Does anybody have any idea what these words mean? No. Of course you don't. You're all stupid idiots who can't learn anything on their own. Kevin, stand up. Kevin is fat. Kevin is the dictionary definition of fat. Having too much floppy tissue. That is Kevin. Now, Phyllis, please stand up. Phyllis is just as obese as Kevin, but we're going to call her Thick Set. Which one sounds better? Uh, Thick Set? Ding, 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 correct. Phyllis is just as obese as Kevin, but describing her as thick set sounds a whole lot better. This is connotation, an implied extra meaning that comes with a word. Like Michael said, denotation is the dictionary definition of a word, and connotation is the implied extra meaning that comes with a word. So Michael's examples actually make sense. Fat does mean having excess flesh, and it does carry a negative connotation. This is why nobody wants to be described as fat, because of this negative feeling that comes with the word, or its negative connotation. Again, however unlikely it seems, Michael was actually correct with his use of thick set. The definition of thick set means heavily or solidly built, but it carries a much more positive connotation than that of fat. Understanding connotation is a key tool to mastering the English language. With so many words of similar meaning, you must be careful to choose the one with the proper connotation. So, for the past few weeks, Michael's been on his language arts teacher kick. He's always trying to teach us things like diction and grammar, and recently, he tried to teach us about degrees of specificity. So, during our staff meeting, he actually explained how using different degrees of specificity helps to keep our reader from getting bored, or, on the flip side, overwhelmed by too many fancy words. I don't even have any readers, so I don't really know what he's talking about, but he said it was like climbing the corporate ladder, except we were supposed to move up and down the ladder of abstraction. So here's our first example sentence. The house was quite small. Now, as you can see, this is pretty bland and very nonspecific. In this example, we are going to focus on the word house. If you were to read this over and over again, you would probably get bored. So to fix this, we use what is called degrees of specificity to keep our audience interested. All this means is that we replace words like house with a more specific word and in turn a more interesting word. Instead of that first sentence, we would write something like this. The recluse's hovel was extraordinarily small. With this sentence, we give some detail as to what is actually going on. We replaced house with a more specific version of the word, in this case, hovel. In this example, we also gave more description to the house, which makes the sentence more intriguing overall. We have just taken Michael's advice and climbed the ladder of abstraction. However, you can go too far in the other direction. It is possible to be over-specific and thereby overwhelm your reader. So be careful not to do that either. Now I want to look at one other thing real quick here, and that is shades of meaning. Shades of meaning is what it sounds like. It is two different words which have the same connotation, probably a similar denotation, but slightly different meanings. We can use the same examples here, so let's look at the sentence, the house was quite small. And again, we're going to look at the subject of the sentence, which is house. Here's another sentence. The homestead 
was quite small. In this example, we simply replaced house with homestead. The connotation of these sentences has remained the same, but a slightly different meaning can be seen between these two sentences, especially when we look at the different word definitions. The definition of house is a building for human habitation, especially one that is lived in by a family or small group of people, whereas homestead means a house, especially a farmhouse. Not only do these words have different definitions, but they have a slightly different feel to them as well. So just by changing this one word, house to homestead, we have created a different shade of meaning for the entire sentence. So it turns out Michael got another call from corporate, and they want to fire Robbie. And I don't really like Robbie, so I'm going to enjoy this very much. I mean, I'm just going to send Robbie out of here in the nicest way that I can, because Michael gave me the job of firing him. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes. Yes, I did. Do you have a strong understanding of formality? What formality? Well, if I said you were awful at your job, would you like that very much? It's kind of unprofessional, sir. Okay. Well, what if I said you sucked at your job? That is very unprofessional. Okay? Yeah? Now what if I took the same simple meaning and I said, after assessing your work for a couple of days, we found you highly unskilled and unfit for your job. Well, that sounds pretty good. Well, you're fired. What? I have a wife and children! Oh, I'm sorry. I meant, due to recent budget cuts, we've had to cut you loose from the job. That's so bad. And we took your wife and kids. What? Here we're going to take a look at degrees of formality, and specifically the word awful. Degrees of formality is the level to which a word is elaborate. It's probably better for me just to show you what I mean. Let's look at the word awful. This is a fairly common word, but we could be less specific. For instance, we could simply say bad. This is an example of being less formal. On the flip side, we could use the word lamentable and increase our level of formality. Understanding this tool is necessary for when speaking or writing to specific audiences. If you were addressing a group of, say, college professors, you would try to speak with an appropriate amount of high formality. If you were speaking to young children, you would keep your level of formality low so they could understand what you were saying. This brings up another point. As you might have noticed, more formal words often seem longer, more complex, or just cooler sounding. There's a reason for this, and it has to do with word origin, which quite simply is the root language for a specific word. For instance, the words bad and awful have Germanic origins, whereas lamentable comes from Latin. This is a common pattern among words. Those with higher degrees of formality often find their roots in Latin, while words of lower formality often find their origin in Germanic languages. Yeah, so Michael got another call from corporate, and there were so many complaints about his teaching methods. I guess they caught wind about the uh, whole fat incident with Kevin and Phyllis. That didn't go over too well. Uh, so yeah, he's discontinued, and he's not going to be teaching that anymore. So hopefully that's the last one we get. Well, everyone, it's been a pretty good week, I'd say, uh, for this language arts, this teaching. I, I think I did a pretty good job. I know you'd all agree with me on that one, but... Uh, I've had another call from corporate and they've said I've done such a good job that actually we can just stop. We're done with that for now. So uh, we don't have to do uh, any more. Uh, kudos to you guys. And now I'm going to be teaching y'all math. <laughs>